looking through the, the wedding album, and uh, what attracted my attention was the Bible next to it, because I got fascinated and wrapped up until somebody tapped me on the shoulder who wanted to introduce me to somebody. I was reading his notes on the Greek, because I was a classics major as an undergraduate. I wasn't in seminary, and uh, I was fascinated by the things and the notes that he must have written. How many? How many? many and I first became aware of that one uh, early Sunday uh, in serving the church. I have to go to another service right after that uh, at another church, and I have a limited time to get there. And there's always the problem of somebody who wants to, to talk uh, before you leave, you know. And usually it's something that could wait. And so the first couple of times after the message, Terry wanted to talk with me. And I said, I have to go. And what he wanted to talk with me is about a particular Greek word I had discussed. And you know, in West Tennessee, there aren't a lot of people who want to stop you to talk about Greek grammar. <laughs> or that you can talk about Greek grammar with. And I thought, this is different. And I stood there. And I stopped worrying about, well, you've got to get on the road. And we discussed, and I thought, I'm fascinated. I didn't know that, and I'd known him for a while. There was no pretension, as the speaker just said, no guile. He didn't flaunt. He didn't uh, uh, say, hey, I, I know all these things. No. As you got to talk with him, as you got to share with him, you realized the wisdom that God had given him. And the thing I like most, since I spent most of my career as a teacher, he always still had a desire to know more, as do I. And so that's been my blessing, to know someone with such a wonderful family, who uh, is uh, so much into his gardening, his cooking. My sister got to meet him last week when she was visiting, and uh, uh, she kept mentioning how much he knew about planting tomatoes. I don't know. <laughs> I, and I need to go to people who do. So treasure those memories. And I suspect that what you'll find, as I will find, as I found since last night, that as I think of the obvious ones, more layers come back. And that is what I will remember and treasure. God bless your family as you continue to remember all that he has given you. He has given so much to us. This time we're going to sing a couple of songs together. First song, you can join us together if you know the song. And then we all get to heaven. <coughs> Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions right and blessed, he'll prepare for us a man.
As I read that psalm, it was read this morning, Psalm 23, I am struck by the journey through the valley. But it reminds me of a good shepherd who cares for us in the midst of that valley. I read recently, it's supposed to be an old Chinese proverb that struck me. It said that there is never a shadow, but what there is a light nearby. And for the believer, we're reminded that even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, there is a good shepherd who is always with us. That he guides us and walks with us through that valley. He brings us to a place of peace. He leads us beside the still quiet waters. As I've often said in contemplating this psalm, I think about water. I think about, you know, wading through the little creek in Van Porter. Sometimes up at Fred's property, sitting there by the lake with a cup of coffee and just listening to the water how peaceful that is to our spirits. There's just something calming about it. Dad used to talk about going to the old backside of Vanport where the creek where they would swing on the grapevines and where he thought about life and, and all that it meant to him as a young man. And as he was finding his way in life and finding his faith, that was a special place to him. Water speaks of peace and quiet and rest. Terry has gone through that dark valley, and it is a dark place. It's something which is painful. It is painful for us as we walk through our dark valley of loss. But the good news is it is not the final words of the chapter of this psalm. For the hope of the believer is that we come to a place where there is a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now you know in my family, and we try to warn everybody, when we bring about 15 Hamiltons on board, you better have some food ready. But we're reminded in the scriptures that there's a bountiful plenty of provision for us. Dad Hamilton and Terry are enjoying the best of the best this morning. Our hearts grieve with loss, but we're reminded that they are in a place of rest. It talks about anointing our head with oil and often the weary travelers as they traveled the dusty roads of the Middle Eastern communities. The tradition would be that you would welcome a traveler by anointing them with oil to give them comfort and rest from their journey. And then the final verse of this chapter speaks about being in the presence of God forever. And as we think about the brevity of our human existence and what all that means, we're reminded that eternity is long. And for those of us who believe, according to John 3.16, it reminds us that for those who are believers, there is the gift of eternal and everlasting life with our Savior. What a wonderful comfort that is to my heart this morning. Terry, in many ways, was like a brother to me. This is a different experience. I've conducted funerals for probably hundreds, maybe thousands of people now. And for my own parents, this is like losing a sibling. 